Hey everybody, welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword! In the last episode, we got the whip. I'm pretty sure we did that last episode. And in this episode, oh, and we also raised the statue down, so now we can access the underworld creepy through the store and see what horrors await us. I mean, they can't be that bad, right? I mean, this place is really beautiful. Let's go on through the door. It is a beautiful evening on the west coast. It is 8.03 at night, and we see horrors, because this is what normally goes on in the west coast after dark, is we see zombies. But if we're kind of cornered, but if we use our sacred shield, that will get them away. Now these guys are cursed bokoblins. I like to say it, call them cursed. They're cursed bokoblins. This isn't like a play on like Blasid. Um, you know, it's cursed. I kind of like saying that better. Cursed bokoblin. This horrifying bokoblin reanimates after death. Analysis indicates it fears pure shiny items, we just found that out, and will startle at the sight of a sacred shield. It is able to reanimate purely through its hatred of this world and its attachment to outlandish underpants. So, these guys are scary, and they take a ton of hits. A ton. Just watch. The only, the bet, get away from me. The best and pretty much the most convenient way of killing them is to knock them down and then do that. And then what you want to do is after doing the backflip, go ahead and swing your sword so you do the auto jump, pe jump attack. And if you target someone, if you target the next enemy in line, after the, um, wh while doing the backflip, then you'll b jump tack on them. And these guys drop evil crystals, so I'm guess I think if you want to grind off of these, you can. I'm personally not going to, because I kind of want to keep the experience as real as possible. I mean, there's that one part where I did grind for stuff, but that was special because... Get off me! That was special because... You know, we needed a lot of stuff. Oh, and there is an amber relic right there. Now these, as I've, I've, as I've said, these randomly generate, so it may not be here for you. But just scout around, it might be there. It might be somewhere. So, let's see. Um, we want to go down this path, but that path right there. But before we do, let's go ahead and take out our beetle. And go ahead and shoot it over here. Now... There's a rupee, a blue rupee, three red hearts, and another rupee. That's not really that that good, but it's it's there. It's worth mentioning. And here's where we were before, right there. So we can go ahead and kill these guys. If you see one that's alone, there's a good chance that is not alone, and more will spawn when you um. When you approach them, more will come out of the ground, and nice evil crystal. So, you want to be careful of that. And I honestly thought there was going to be one that popped out there. Oh, and cool use for the whip is flocks of keys. It takes, okay, we took out like 10, most of 10 in like 3 hits. So, those are a great way, the whip is a great way to take them out. Go ahead and catch these. Placid butterflies. And we have 33. I, I can count. That's pretty nice. And there is a wall here. Goddess wall. No, no, we have to use our heart. Where is it? I do not... Where is it? Oh, there it is. Wow, that was that was much further along than I thought. Sheesh. Okay, so let's see. What do we want? Um, I honestly... Hmm. Let's go ahead and get... Rupees.
Rupees and rupees galore. Ooh, a silver rupee. Wow. A silver rupee? That's amazing. Okay, so I, I, I'm not sure if these these are random, the rupees you get. But if, if they are, get a silver rupee right there. Sheesh. A gemstone shines deep within the eye. Strike it to shut the mouth and damn the flow. Okay. I kind of wish that had rhymed, but... I don't know. Either or works for me. Same with, like, songs. Sometimes I don't mind if songs don't rhyme as long as they kind of tell a story. So, like, if it has a tune and it tells a story, I think I'm, I can kind of fine with it. It doesn't really need to rhyme. Sometimes poetry... Well, I guess it's not poetry, but stuff can be poetic without rhyming. I, I kind of wish more songs did that, too. I mean, and, and then there's the, the other song that gets, that both rhymes and tells a story, which those are pretty cool. I gotta be honest, those are really cool. Like, sometimes when I write songs, I'm not going to share them because they're really bad, but when I write songs for, like, video game tracks, just, you know, while I'm doing stuff, I just kind of think up words, you know, it's fine, as long as it, you know, as long as it tells a good story, I think, or has a good message, I think that it's okay if it doesn't rhyme. Also, I think I just got a text, which is interesting. It's interesting because I normally don't get internet where I am. In, in this one room in my house, it's kind of connected to the garage, the, the room I record in. It's connected to the garage, so it's kind of out there, and it it's kind of far away from the... Uh, the router, so I normally don't get internet here very well, so I'm kind of surprised that I did. Like, my internet will randomly shut off because for some reason a molecule moved in the way and it's now blocking the signal. I'm surprised I ever get internet in here. So, I didn't really explain that, but you just want to reverse the that and then just come over here. And you want to try to hit these enemies pretty much Anytime there's an enemy that you can, like, knock away, you kind of want to hit it onto the, um, the ledge, because, you know, they drop stuff. I mean, even if it's green rupees, every little bit helps. Um, we're going up. Now we want to go to the other side of that switch. Now it doesn't look like we can jump here because we'll die, but you can. It's kind of an illusion, because this right here... This clear part, it kind of makes it look like there's a bigger drop, there's a gap here, but in reality there isn't really. So we want to jump over here. And we want to whip that. Honestly, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, the whip is probably my favorite item. Probably. Um, let's see, what's the other item? I know one of the items, but I have actually forgotten the last item, or the second to last item, or whichever one that is. I've forgotten. That's really wacky. I'll probably remember later. Actually, no, no, never mind. I just remembered. I like that item, too. Oh, my word. You startled me. So... We see probably one of the creepiest things in Skyward Sword. Piles of bones. And I'll actually turn up, turn the game's audio up for a second so you can hear the evil sound they make when you go on them. If I can do it. Wait. Wait. Barely hear it. That's just creepy, man. Oh, wait, cool. Randomly generated thing. Amber Relic. I kind of like that they do that. It's not set, which is pretty cool, because then you can find some cool, you know, little Easter eggs. And we raise up the asparagus. Now, I was in a store today, a grocery store, and I looked at an asparagus, and um, it looked nothing like that. So I'm trying to think for the life of me what plant I'm thinking of, because it's sort of like an asparagus. And it's sectioned off like that. Oh! Oh, I know what they're called. Horseradish. 
No, not horseradish. Um, horsetail? Yeah, horsetails. Horsetails. That's that's the plant I'm thinking of. Okay, so we're calling these horsetails from now on because they they look nothing like asparaguses. Spare guy. Asparagus. They look nothing like that. They look like horseradish. Or not horseradish. <laughs> Horsetail. Now I'm just going to be confused between the three of those and just call them all of them. Then pretty soon I'm going to be calling them radish. Radish. I guess. So we climb this thin strand and we are chased by cursed bogoblins, which is the, cra the creepiest thing in the world. Well, not really. It's really creepy though. It's up there. So we have to run for our lives up here. Now, it's not really that hard, but there is suspenseful music, and it is creepy, and really kind of sick. I mean, it's not like we can go any faster and we're at a set pace, but it's still creepy. It's still really creepy. And the interesting thing about this is this creepy thing, this is meant, this is part of Let's see. This is part of... Um, it's based on a short story called The Spider's Thread. Um, in it, th it's based on Buddhism. And um, in it, like Buddha's walking through paradise and he gains in gazes into a pond. Past the lotus petals. Lotus petals. Uh, veiling the water surface. And seeing into the depths of the underworld. So, does that ring any bells? The lotus petals and the beautiful atmosphere. He, you look past it and all you see is that. So he does that. And in the darkness, he sees a criminal criminal uh, who goes by the name of Kondata, who once intentionally avoided stepping on a spider. He was moved to try to reclaim this man. So he lo lowered a spider thread, kind of uh, ironic, to uh, into the underworld. And Kandata started climbing up to the paradise that the Buddha guy was in. However, some other sinners started climbing as well, and Kandata, worried that the thread would not support the weight, exclaimed that it was his and his alone. At this point, it breaks, because he was only worried about his own salvation and not that of his fellow sinners. So that, that's kind of an, that's an interesting reference, as creepy as that, that sight is, because they're zombies. So anyway, this, this stone tablet says, Return the stone giant to its original form and descend below the, the earth again along the thread. There you'll find a key to the path ahead. So that's what we're going to do. What we want to do is go ahead and switch this. And that'll raise the platform, or extend the platform, I should say. Now you can access over there, which is okay, I guess. So you want to whip this flip it up and now also where is my iPod because I'm getting texts oh there it is <laughs> let me text Zade because that's that's who's texting me uh, just a second I'm recording uh, <laughs> let's see what his reply is <laughs> this is pretty funny okay so now that we raise this up I'm gonna backflip into here. Oh wow. Okay. And question: because this this is a spider's thread because of the story, because of, this is so thin, I wonder if it if he's not getting rope burn from this because that looks painful. But if it's perfectly smooth, then I guess not. Oh, and these guys are not going to harass us, by the way. We can just jump down. We're fine. Okay. Shadow Ganon's reply is: he says, ah. Give a shout! Give give a shout out! Wrong grammar. To Captain Falcon. Okay. Um, Captain Falcon, you're awesome. <laughs> okay. Shout outs to Shadow Ganon, by the way. So now that that statue's raised, we can go ahead and get the boss key. Is it going to be that easy? We'll soon see. Also, worth mentioning is that 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 and that is super super creepy also all those chains which are totally unnecessary like there's no purpose to those chains it just why why are those chains there it's just like creepy freakish g decor it's really grotesque unless what if 
And for a second I thought I heard a, a wall master. What if this, in like a previous adventure, was the boss chamber? And this was like the boss room. And these chains were like holding back a really cool big beast dude. Hmm. The more you think about. Also, I really hope that this, uh, this episode makes it to the final cut because, man, this, this episode's good. So, we see that, one, the statue's about to crush us, and two, we have a bunch of these guys. So, we're gonna try to defeat all of them before. It, actually, never mind, we have not enough time. Oh, my word. I was gonna see how many we could defeat, but no way, we were gonna get killed there. And also, the game designers were really nice in lowering the statue down because, you know, they, the statue, we would have had to go all the way up there, climb the spider web out of the underworld, and get chased by creepy monster dudes. But instead, we just get to go right here, and then we get to swim up the horse tail, and we get to go on land, and then we get to go on the other horse tail, and... We get to swim backwards. Actually, you know what? We get we went into the horse tail. Now we are in the horseradish. And let's go up the asparagus. We're at the top of the asparagus. And now, after we've climbed both the horseradish, the horse tail, and the asparagus, we can go put the key in the lotus, which is the easiest key in the world to figure out, because it's not gonna go like this. It's certainly not going like this, that, or that. Only way it can go is this, spinny, and there we go. Super easy, and insert. Whoa. Also, I have a, oh, oh wow, that's a lily pad. I honestly never knew, never realized that that was a lily pad. That's super cool. I, I just thought it was like some plate thing, but it's a lily pad. That's cool. Or just Pac-Man, but I'm gonna go with lily pad because that's cool. Or a lime. Actually, it looks more like a lime than a lily pad. So it's a, a limey pad, I guess. So... I guess... We can raise this up. Let's go ahead and do that. We're to the boss. Pretty sweet. And it's not really a puzzle. It'd be kind of cool if it had to do with like the secret order of the temple, if it mixed up with that. That'd be pretty cool. But instead, they kind of just give it to us. They're just like, okay, do this, and then you're, you're home free. I kind of wish they had done something more complicated than that, but I don't know. This dungeon's cool as is. So, we're on, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's kind of weird game design, honestly. That's just weird. Wait, okay, please tell me. Oh, oh wait, we're, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing. Oh, wait. I'm gonna try it again. I'm sorry. Just wait. Okay. We're glitching it. No, 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 no. One more time. One more time. Okay. Run. Okay. We're good. Doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Ah. Uh, I wonder if you could glitch through that if you took enough time, or maybe you could glitch through this. No, I don't think you can. But I wonder if you could glitch through that. That'd be kind of interesting. I'd say leave it, leave a video re uh, response, but you can't do that anymore. Oh! Interrupted myself because we found a thing. Okay, we're gonna go into the boss room. Um, I'm gonna save real quick, then I'll be right with you. Honestly, I'm not saving. I'm actually stopping till tomorrow. So, the next time you see me, I'll be recording in the future from now because it's time for, I need to go to bed. So, I'll see you guys what is one day for me, which is kind of fun, because last time I, I said this, it was, it was um, one, a couple minutes for me and one day for you, or two days for you. 
but this time it's one day for you, a couple second, uh, one day for me, sheesh, one day for me, a couple seconds for you. Okay, see you in a day. Okay, let's go ahead and head on in, but before that, let's go ahead and grab this. Now, like I said just a second ago, this is 24 hours after I did the... F I... You last saw me, or heard me, S but, I don't know, I'm still fresh, so let's go ahead and head on in the boss room to fight the boss of the... That's, that's great, that's just great. To fight the boss of the Ancient Sister. Now that jump could have been worse. So let's go ahead uh, head on in. But before I do, um, I'm going to tell you that once we head in there, after introduction to the boss and all, I'm going to take a second to adjust the audio because it gets loud. So I don't want to drown my commentary out with the music. So let's go ahead and head on in. Link, you shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> and on top of that statue is Gurahim. You certainly are persistent. I'm terribly busy trying to find the clues that will help me revive the, the Demon King. Long sentence, sheesh. Your incessant buzzing around my head like some irksome gadfly when I'm this busy is... Well, it's making me very disagreeable. Ciao. Gurham brings the statue to life. This is Kaluktos, and pardon me a moment while I do the audio. Okay, let's do this. So, Kaluktos, first of all, notice the expression on his face when he swings the thing. He's very, very automated. Very automated. He see, you don't see any emotion in his expression, but just wait until you see some of the creepy stuff he does. So, what does Fee say about you? Target lock, Kaluktos. This ancient automaton defends the ancient cistern and eliminates intruders. The cursed en energy supply Gurham provided to this contraption has given it power far beyond its con conventional limits. The red orb-shaped cores embedded in its torso and arms provide it limited stability and prevent it from falling uh, to pieces. More info. This is all, I, all the information I have at the present time. When I have more information to report, Master, your sword will flash. You, you can always press down to call upon me. Furthermore, when you... yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Kalaktos, very robotic. Now what you want to do is you want to take apart his arms with your whip. You can't do it normally, but you have to wait till he swings and gets stuck in the ground. Ah. I'm used to Toilet Princess where you press the same button again to use it. So this boss is very metho methodical. And it has a, a lot of phases. Well, not really a lot of phases, but you'll see in a second. So what you want to do now is hit his core. Now you want to do vertical and uh, vertical up and down slices because if you do horizontal ones, your sword will get hit on the rims of the metal. Now, now about this thing I said with phases is the fact that the more times you hurt him, the quicker he'll get. So it's not necessarily the same exact thing every single time. He gets quicker, so you might want to watch out for that. 
He has two main phases, which we'll see this one very soon. After he uses those two arms, I believe that will be the end of the first phase. But two main phases, but there are many phases inside of those. For example, he gets quicker. So let's go ahead and take that out. And let's go ahead and move in. And take him down for the count. Take him down for the count. What, what is this? <laughs> That's weird grammar. So he'll bring back his arms and he'll go into spider mode. No, he will show that he's not just a base. He has legs and a cage and swords. This just changed a lot. He can now follow you. He's not very fast, but he is very powerful. You do not want to get hit by this guy because it does, I think, like two hearts of damage which is actually a good amount. So you want to take out the, his arms. Now, you use his sword. So let's go ahead and use his sword. Oh, that was so close. Come on. So, I, I think I, I like using my sword a little bit better just because it's more familiar to me and it's faster. It doesn't do as much damage, but it is faster. But, thing about using your sword, you cannot kill him with just your sword. Even if his health is at zero and you hit him with, the, with your sword, it will do nothing. You have to finish the battle with one of his. Really weird, but it's there. So this changes now. After you harm him, he will start swinging around wildly, and then he will spawn Cursed Bokoblins. Now if you, if you leave them alone a while, long enough, he will kill them himself by hit killing him with his sword. But you probably want to finish him off yourself. Now normally they have a lot of HP, but in this particular circumstance, they don't. So I think this is the last hit we have to do. Now watch his expression. I mentioned his expression. When he swings, he has a really really sick smile on before he was emotionless now he's enjoying what he's doing it's kind of it's character change in a boss which is interesting because you don't besides final bosses you don't see bosses besides the boss room pretty much i mean there's the occasional boss like um argarak i believe his name was in in twilight princess the dragon where you see him like throughout the whole thing but this, he is changing. Before, it was just another it was just a job. He was a robot. But Gurahim has given him the same sick the same sick, twisted, morbid feelings that he has. Motives. So let's go ahead and take him out and death. No? Okay. He apparently has a lot more hits than I thought. So let's go ahead and run away because he's going to be faster than ever this time. Now you can shield bash that. Oh, wait, did I shield bash it earlier? But you can shield bash the, that, but he'll immediately follow up with another hit. So it's not even worth it. Now his gigantic hits where he swings it over his uh, shoulder, those you can shield bash, but there's no purpose to it. Because, you know, he's he, they're just going to bounce right off. So this will do nothing, but I'll use it anyway. So let's go ahead. Suddenly I'm English. Let's go. I keep targeting the sword. Let's go ahead and take him out after he finishes swinging. So he's going to do that. What exactly are these swords called? Also, he's really sick right now. Oop. And take him out. Out. You're dead. Crime doesn't pay. <laughs> One of the few bosses that doesn't completely explode when you kill him. Now, some interesting trivia about this boss once my page loads 
once it loads. I'm not leaving this room until it loads. And also, his face is kind of, is back to normal. Also, his eyes got bigger, which is creepy. He seems to be wearing a crown. Oh, and you can come back here and use his swords. There's no real purpose to this, and he can't leave the room with it. But they're there. And also, you can move his armor. So, I guess there is no... I'll try to do it from memory. Um, he's based on, I believe, like the class of gods and um, or deities in um, Buddhism called Azura, I believe. They're like the lowest class or something, the lowest tier, I believe. Um, I'm doing this from memory because my page is not loading, but I believe that's how it works. So let's go ahead and pick up the heart container. And now we have 12 hearts. And you guys are probably hating this. Where are we going next? Skyloft. Don't worry, we don't. I don't think we have near as much to do as we did last time. Not nearly like the four episodes. Or three. That was horrible. So. This is what we're here for. We're here. To upgrade our sword. You have to stab for some reason. And amazingness. Raise your sword, Master. <laughs> the flames of Far Faror have improved your, f your sword. Making it longer and sharp enough to do twice as much damage. <laughs> and for some reason, I honestly do not have an explanation for this. We see the Triforce of Courage appear on Link's hand. His right hand, no less. Usually it's his left. The Sacred Flame has purified your blade, enhancing and evolving it. Metamorphosizing it. With your sword now enhanced, you are ready to learn a new melody. We should return to the Isle of Songs. And we're going to do that. next episode also next episode actually in this episode we got a lot done we defeated the boss and next episode we're gonna go on skyloft and do some uh side questy things and again it's not gonna be nearly as long as last time last time we spent like three or four or three and a half episodes in skyloft this time probably cut just one or two we we don't have nearly as much to do okay I'll see you next time for another PAL Plays, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword.